If you want to work faster in Premiere, After Effects, or both, the Essential Graphics Panel is the best way to do it. I've got a ton of tricks that will help you work faster and smarter in both apps every day. Let's check it out. Hey, Kyle Hamrick here. Whether you're using or creating motion graphics templates or just looking for ways to streamline your work within After Effects, the Essential Graphics Panel is extremely powerful. But a lot of folks don't realize all the different, some might say essential, ways that it can be used. By the way, if you want to download the project files from this tutorial and work along with me, those are available for free over at schoolofmotion.com. Just follow the link in the description. In Premiere, the Essential Graphics panel is a one-stop shop for creating and animating text and graphics, or for customizing pre-made motion graphics templates. In After Effects, you can use the Essential Graphics panel for creating those templates, but you can also use it as a unified control space, so you can edit properties without having to twirl layers open. But you can also use it to set up what are called essential properties, which you can use to expose and edit properties or keyframes that live inside your pre-compositions without having to open them. And my personal favorite, you can create customizable instances of those pre-compositions without actually changing the original. That last one is really gonna blow your mind. But first, let's start off with Premiere Pro and see how to take full advantage of the Essential Graphics panel in there. So I have a clip here in my Premiere timeline and I want to put a little title above it. I'll start by grabbing the Shape tool and drawing a circle. You'll notice over here in the Essential Graphics panel, we can see Shape 1 and some transform properties, colors, and other stuff we can adjust. I want to add some text, so I'll grab my Title tool and type out Sunrise. It added that to the same graphics clip, so we now have a type layer sitting above our shape. These are layers just like in other design apps, so whichever sits on top is what's visible. Let's add a second type layer. Instead of using the Type tool, I can click on this New Layer button and then choose Text. I'll change it to say Subtitle and then position it down here. If I want to import a specific logo or texture, I can do that using that same New Layer button and then choosing From File. I'll add this texture image and move it to the bottom of my layers. I'd like for this to be contained within that circle I drew earlier, so I can select that shape and then come down to the bottom where it says Mask with Shape. Activating this will use this shape as a mask for everything below it. Text layers have the same functionality, so I could undo that, select my main title text instead, and then choose Mask with Text. I'd prefer to keep that shape visible, so let's drag it to the bottom, and then put our type and texture into a group by using this little folder icon, which will limit the layers that get masked by the text. Even with multiple elements in this graphic, they're all treated as a single clip on the timeline, meaning you can easily move them around, trim, or add a transition. But since each element and group has its own set of transform properties, you can also move them independently. If you want to animate one of these, click on the little icon for that property. This is the same as activating the stopwatch over in the effect controls panel. Since each element has its own set of transforms, you can also change the clip transforms without affecting what you've done here. While the design and animation capabilities of Premiere are somewhat limited, there are some really useful features available in this panel. Maybe I want the subtitle to always stick to the right edge of the main title, when it moves or even if the text changes. Under Responsive Design Position, I can choose whether I want this to look at the whole video frame or a specific layer. I'll choose my Sunrise layer and then choose the right edge. Now if I edit my larger title, this other one goes along for the ride. Easy. Or let's say I've added some in and out animation to my graphic, and I want those to stick to the ends of the clip, but I still want to be able to adjust the overall clip duration without having to keep moving those keyframes around. With none of the layers selected, I'll get access to Responsive Design Time, which lets me protect a certain chunk of time, say one second on either end, and now that animation will stay the same even when I adjust the clip's length. Pretty nice, huh? Well, you can certainly build something more complex in After Effects, and we will in just a minute. If you want to save this to use again in the future, you can simply select your graphic clip in the timeline, come up here to Graphics and Titles, and choose Export as Motion Graphics Template. You'll also use the Essential Graphics panel to browse and edit other motion graphics templates, or what the cool kids call Mogurts. You can get these from other artists, purchase them from Adobe, or create your own in either Premiere or After Effects. And they can be anything from a fully designed, ready to customize animation, or with proper planning, they can be super versatile, customizable elements to help speed up your team's editing and graphics workflow. Here in the Essential Graphics panel, when you select Browse My Templates, 
you'll see all the templates available on your system. There are actually a ton of them that get installed with Premiere for free. If your team uses Adobe Libraries, you can also include content from those with this dropdown. If you click on Adobe Stock, you can browse thousands of free or paid templates of all kinds. And there are some handy search controls right here to help narrow things down. Of course, you can also browse all these same templates on the Adobe Stock website, which gives you a few more filters. We saw that every graphic element you create in Premiere gets added to the Essential Graphics panel, which can get a little cluttered once you add more layers. In After Effects, you can be very selective about what gets added to the panel, which means you can use it pretty much however you want. Shape layers, for example, are pretty dense, right? Let's open up our panel by going to Window, Essential Graphics. Back in the timeline, let's scroll down and find the stroke width. There we go. Now I can just drag this over to the panel, and I'll be able to easily adjust this value without having to twirl the layer open. I can also rename this to keep track of what it's controlling. You can also add properties that live within pre-compositions. Let's double click this square comp here, find the fill color, and instead of dragging, you can also right click the property and choose add to essential graphics. Now I can close this pre-comp, but still be able to change the color of the square from one convenient place. So there's use number one. Make yourself an easy control panel for the properties you actually care about. Here's an intro title I recently built, and I'd like to be able to hand it off to our junior designer so they can customize it for each episode. The Essential Graphics panel is a great place to centralize those controls, so they won't have to go looking through layers every time. First, let's make sure this composition is open in Essential Graphics. I can right-click anywhere in this empty area and choose Open in Essential Graphics. If the panel was already open, just use this drop-down menu to make sure you have the right comp selected. Now the most obvious thing we'll need to add is the guest name. I'll select that layer and press UU to reveal anything changed from its default settings. This source text property is exactly what I want, so let's add that to the panel. I wanted to make it easy to update the colors as well, so I created a null layer with a few color controls, which you can find under Effect, Expression Controls, Color Control. And then I used these property pick whips to connect most of the colors in my composition to those, so I can easily change all those colors in one place. While these are already pretty easy to find, I think it would be a nice thing to add to our template. So I'll select all three of them, right click, and choose Add to Essential Graphics. Now someone with basically zero After Effects knowledge would be able to open the project and update things right here without even having to touch a single layer. That's number two, a focused update panel for template projects. And we can take this one step further for number three, exporting this as a Mogurt for use in Premiere. We've actually already done most of the work here, but we can add this photo layer so it can be easily swapped out too. I'll select that entire layer and drag it up into the panel. Just to keep things organized, let's rearrange a little bit. And I'll maybe come down here, add group, I'll name it colors, and we can just tuck those color controls away inside there. Back in my timeline, let's scrub up to here where we can clearly see all the elements. And then I'll come back up to the panel and click set poster time to set this as the poster image we'll see when we view this in Premiere. We just need to name our template guest intro and then click export motion graphics template. It'll prompt you to save your project first. Okay. Now you can choose a variety of save destinations, but I'll just add this straight to my local templates folder. You can add keywords if you like, but I'll skip that for now and just hit OK. That template we just created is now visible right here in Premiere's version of Essential Graphics. I'll just drag that onto my timeline, and now I can adjust those properties that I just set up. Let's update the name, and we can drag this new photo over here and drop it right on top of the old one. Boom. I don't need to change the colors right now, but they're here if we want them. And all the animation I created in After Effects plays just like it should, and I can make as many versions of this as I need right here in Premiere. You can actually use these without even having After Effects installed on this machine. Now, things like title cards are obvious choices for this Mogurt workflow, but if you're smart about it, you can use this for so much more. I highly recommend checking out this awesome case study by Chloe Dalby, who outlines how her team at NerdWallet uses a combination of clever Mogurts to supercharge the way they build videos for YouTube and other social channels. Make sure to look for that link in the description. If what I've been showing you seems useful, it is, and you'd like to learn more about the ways the Essential Graphics panel, and especially Motion Graphics templates, aka Mogurts, can be useful in your work, make sure to check out Mogurt Mania. 
In this Instant Access course, instructor Morgan Williams will show you the importance of using templates and toolkits and teach you everything you need to get started creating your own Mogerns so you and your team can work faster and smarter every day. All right, I saved the best for last. There's one more way to use this panel in After Effects, and it's not exaggerating to say that when this came out, it revolutionized the way I work. The setup is basically what you've already seen, but what you can do with it is huge. Here's a comp with a couple layers. We have a few shapes, a text layer, and a handful of keyframes. If I'm using this as a pre-composition in a bigger design, I may need to keep reopening this thing to adjust the timing, tweak the colors. That gets old pretty fast, but check this out. Let's open up Essential Graphics and add the source text, the text color, the colors for this stroke and this circle, and then the start and end values that are animating the stroke on and off. I'll take a second to organize and rename, and let's go back to that other composition now. This time, I don't want to change anything from the Essential Graphics panel, because that's actually changing the original property inside my pre-comp. Sometimes that's useful, but let's go ahead and close that so I can show you something even better. Here on that pre-comp, as a layer in your timeline, if you twirl this open, there's something new, Essential Properties. Open that up and you'll see everything we just added to the Essential Graphics panel. We can easily update these colors or even the text, but look at this. Those start and end keyframes are not only visible here, but editable. So even if you didn't get the timing quite right before inside the pre-comp, I can adjust it here in context. If we go back into the original pre-comp, it hasn't changed. Remember that for a minute. Maybe I need another of these things in the same comp. I'll Control or Command D to duplicate that layer, and let's make a few more updates. Nice, now we have two totally different versions of the same pre-comp. Wait, but there's still only one copy of it in the project panel. That's right, even though we're using essential properties to make different variations of these specific properties, they're still based on a single original composition. So not only can you easily see these properties and make adjustments, but you can also make several different iterations of an entire element and still make universal changes in one master composition without needing to create multiple separate versions you have to keep track of. In fact, I could hop back into the pre-comp and say, add this square. Since nothing about it is set up as an essential property, that element will now be visible in all the copies of this thing. But if I add the opacity for the square as an essential property, I could turn it off in some copies and leave it visible in others. Good stuff, right? My example here was intentionally simple, but think about something like, building one rig for five or six different characters. You can add almost any property in here, so you're really only limited by your own imagination. If you ever want to reset one of these to its original settings that you created inside the pre-comp, you can use this pull button, either per property or for the whole list. Or you can use this push button, so any changes you make to this copy can be pushed into the original pre-comp and would now become the default values for each of those properties. I know it might take a little bit to wrap your head around all of this, but I urge you to try it out, even if it's just making little adjustments to one property without opening a pre-comp. I really can't overstate how much time this feature can save you. I hope you're excited to try out these possibilities, and if you come up with something cool, we'd love to hear about it. Leave us a comment to let us know how you're using the Essential Graphics panel and Essential Properties. Or if you post something cool you made using these techniques, feel free to tag us on social media. If you enjoyed what you just saw, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and head over to schoolofmotion.com to learn more about our interactive online curriculum. Let our team know if you have any questions at all. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.